Hello. Hi. Nice to see you. How are you doing? Good afternoon. Hello. Good afternoon. Okay, so um, last time we discussed micro structural uh, features of current electric current, like charge transfer. Hello, everyone. <clears throat> and uh, we figure out that electric current is proportional to concentration of charge carriers, which are available in the medium where this electric current is happening. Um, like free charge carriers, which actually can move. And uh, also there is another parameter, which is mobility of these charge carriers. So the, mm, mm, or we didn't, we haven't yet introduced mobility as parameter, but <clears throat> we had mm, drift velocity. So later we will discuss a bit more in details. Um, drift velocity is a product of mobility and electric um, field magnitude inside the conductor. So that's why kind of two parameters which define um, how much charge uh, cross um, cross section of a conductor per unit time is defined by the concentration number of mobile charge carriers per unit volume. <clears throat> and also um, how fast these charge carriers are, are moving in the direction of electric field, um, so-called drift uh, speed. So now we will continue working with uh, direct current uh, <clears throat> and uh, we'll introduce resistance. I uh, will discuss shortly uh, temperature dependence of resistance uh, and uh, also uh, electrical power, which uh, dissipating on a resistor uh, when there is some uh, electric current flowing through it. So let me switch to our slides. <clears throat> so we have shown previously that uh, current density J is equal to electric electric current I divided by area of the cross section of the conductor. So that is equal to concentration. Probably we can put here Q element uh, concentration N and VD, which is drift speed. <coughs> so it is impossible. So we can do the following. Uh, we can represent this current density, J, uh, with another equation, which is called as um, Ohm's law in differential form. So J is equal to some parameter sigma, which is electrical, specific electrical conductivity of the material times magnitude of electric field. So this is Ohm's law in differential form. So uh, let us now introduce the um, electrical resistance. So we have some conductor. Let's say at initial, like at one edge of this conductor, we have potential VA at the second edge VB. There is some area A of this cross section, 
and there is electric field inside the conductor. So assuming that we have uniform electric field, and if we know this length of the conductor, distance between uh, points with potential VA and VB, the potential difference delta V can be expressed as electric field times length of the conductor. <coughs> so, um, coming back to this definition of current density via uh, sigma and electric field, electrical conductivity and electric field magnitude, we can um, represent electric field as delta V divided by L. So we can write here sigma times delta V divided by L. Now we can express um, delta V from this equation, the potential difference that will be um, L divided by sigma and times J, current density. Uh, we know that J is I divided by A. It's electric current divided by area. So if we now substitute it here, will be L divided by sigma divided by um, A. And here, we will just multiply by electric current. That is equal to R times I, means resistance times current, will give us the potential difference. So this term is actually um, stands for uh, electrical resistance. So we can write it down here. R is equal to L divided by sigma A. So electrical resistance of a conductor is defined by its um, geometry. So by the lens of the conductor, proportional to the lens of the conductor, um, reversely proportional to the area of the cross section, and uh, also reversely proportional to specific electrical conductors. So units for resistance are volts per ampere, and that is ohm and denoted with such capital omega uh, letter. Um, another thing what we need to highlight here, that uh, it is quite common to operate <clears throat> not only with specific electrical conductance, but also specific electrical uh, resistance. <clears throat> so that is reciprocal to uh, conductance. So rho is equal to one over sigma. And uh, uh, taking into account this uh, specific electrical resistance, uh, resistance can be given as rho times L divided by A. Another equation which is quite commonly used. Uh, what is necessary to know about electrical resistance? So we mentioned previously um, in our discussion about properties of materials, um, like conductors, semiconductors, dielectrics, that in conductors we have uh, usually represented by metals. So let us consider metals as an example we have plenty of free charge carriers. 
these charge carriers are, are mobile. They can move within the crystalline lattice of this um, material and can easily participate in charge transport in electric like formation of electric current. Uh, specific electrical conductance or uh, electrical resistance, electrical conductivity and resistance. Um, these are parameters of the material. And uh, it will depend on material itself. So for instance, um, if you check electrical wires in uh, this power grid, most of them are made from copper because copper is uh, possesses the highest electrical conductivity in comparison to um, majority of other metals. Uh, silver possesses higher, but still silver is quite expensive. So it's too expensive to be used in um, electrical grids. So copper is the number one choice for these purposes. Uh, also, you can find some aluminum. In that case, you need to increase uh, cross section A of aluminum wires in order to get the same um, resistance uh, of total uh, grid as you would achieve with copper wires with smaller cross section. So, you kind of need to use more material in order to um, get the same uh, low resistance. Uh, however, there is, besides the type of metal, there is another factor which can influence um, specific electrical resistance or conductivity. This is temperature. So imagine if we have some mobile electrons in metal, they experience some electric force because of electric field inside the conductor. They start to move and uh, with this drift speed. So this drift speed will depend on magnitude of electric field and also, which is like driving force. There will be also some let's say drag force, which will slow them down. And that is scattering of these electrons with the atoms of the crystalline lattice. This scattering um, happens in different way, in different materials. Um, depends on their atoms, on their crystalline structure. Um, and that's why we, first of all, at the same temperature, different metals possess different electrical conductivity or resistance. And also, um, if we increase temperature, the vibration of these atoms in crystalline lattice of uh, metals, they increase their magnitude. So they start to vibrate a bit more intensive because of higher temperature. And that obviously causes a more efficient scattering of these electrons moving in the direction of electric field on these vibrations. So if we increase temperature, we increase scattering of electrons because of larger vibrations of uh, atoms uh, with respect to their equilibrium position in the crystalline lattice uh, of this metal material. And that causes increase in specific electrical resistance. So um, it has been shown that for a majority of metals, like pure metals, we get quite simple temperature dependence of electrical resistance. So if we are talking about specific electrical resistance as a function of temperature, it can be described as rho um, not. Um, times one plus alpha T minus T naught. And here we have some linear dependence. So rho naught 
is specific electrical resistance um, at um, temperature T naught. So if, for instance, we increase temperature from T naught to some temperature T, assuming that temperature T is larger than T naught, um, here we have some rho at temperature T will be equal to rho naught. Uh, times unity plus alpha delta t. So if delta t is positive, uh, we see that resistance increases, linearly increases with temperature, and alpha here is temperature coefficient of electrical resistance. Uh, so this alpha will be different for different metals because they will respond differently uh, since they are made of different materials. Uh, however, um, this linear dependence on temperature uh, with different alpha coefficient, like quantity, quantitatively different, but qualitatively it will be applicable for the majority of, of metals. So if temperature delta T change of temperature is less than uh, zero, so negative, um, resistance will decrease. Uh, means with increase of temperature, resistance, electrical resistance of conductors described in the scope of uh, metals linearly increases. So if, for instance, we uh, T uh, is T naught, so here we get zero, so we get just rho times unity, rho naught times unity, so rho at T equal T naught will be just rho naught, means uh, it defines the um, feet, like property of this rho naught, which is temper uh, electrical resistance, um, specific electrical resistance at temperature T naught. Uh, you can choose any temperature as T naught, quite convenient to deal with some reference temperatures, uh, which is, for instance, mm, zero degrees of Celsius. That could be uh, an option. But uh, keep in mind that here we operate with. Uh, absolute temperature in Kelvin. Uh, however, when we have change of temperature, delta T, then it doesn't matter anymore. So now with this, we can proceed further and consider electric power. So obviously, if we have um, some charge transport, and we have some scattering of these mobile charges inside some material. Uh, part of energy, which is provided to these electric charges by external uh, power source, um, battery, will be delivered to this resistor uh, and uh, uh, dissipated in form of heat on this resistor. So we want to quantify how much of electric uh, power will be dissipated on a resistor at given conditions in the form of heat. So let us consider simple electric circuit. We have some battery. We have also some resistor. So that's how we show a resistor uh, in electric circuits. Some resist uh, resistance R of this resistor. This battery provides some potential difference delta V between points A and B. And another important factor to highlight that um, since we uh, kind of localize electrical resistance in within this kind of element of electric circuit, uh, we assume that electrical resistance of connecting wires is equal to zero. So it's not far from uh, reality because we usually make wires from such some highly conductive materials like copper. Uh, so they possess minimum electrical resistance. So we have minimum losses of 
uh, signal or electric power. So at some approximation in comparison to um, these load resistors, means some devices which perform some useful work. Resistance of uh, connecting wires can be uh, in many cases neglected. However, not always. And we will probably discuss this also in a bit. So let us consider some point C and point D here. So if electric charges move through battery, um, some internal chemical energy of the battery is transformed into electrical energy. And uh, uh, these charges, when they move from point A to point B, they gain some energy because of work of uh, this uh, um, electric battery. So this energy, additional energy which they gain, will be equal to <clears throat> total charge which went through the battery times change of the potential between the terminals of the battery. Means uh, potential difference between point A and B. So if we have some uh, energy provided from electrical battery to the circuit and that is state condition means uh, we have some equilibrium. Uh, that means that we lose, if we provide certain amount of energy, we need to lose equal amount of energy in order to um, establish this equilibrium condition, steady state condition. So that means that this provided energy is actually equal to the loss of um, energy at uh, the resistor when uh, our charge carriers are moving into resistor they start to scatter in the crystalline lattice of this resistor material uh, and because of scattering part of their energy of this directional motion along electric field um, will be transformed into heat and dissipated in form of heat. So now let us um, consider the rate of electric energy uh, decrease uh, as charge Q moves through the resistor. So we can write the following. You know that if we want to know the rate uh, of electric energy decrease means we want to know how much of energy dissipates per unit time. So in order to do that, we take derivative du over dt. Like first derivative tells us how fast this energy will dissipate. So that will be equal to dq times dv, uh, delta v, and uh, here is dt. Now, we can write the following. It will be dq over dt times delta v. And who will tell me what is this dq over dt rate of change of electric charge? I. I. You're absolutely right. That is electric current. So we have I times delta V, means we have current times uh, potential difference uh, at our resistor. Assuming that um, these wires do not possess any um, resistance, um, potential difference um, between points AB and CD, they are equal. So if we are talking about uh, rate of energy dissipating on resistor, that's actually electric power, which is 
um, dissipating on the resistor uh, as in, in form of P. So electric power P is equal to electric current times potential difference. Uh, we also know that uh, potential difference delta V is equal to I times R, uh, electric current times resistor. So we have shown this on the previous slide. Taking this into account, we can substitute delta V with this expression. And eventually we get P equal to I squared times R. Or it also can be written in terms of uh, potential difference, delta V squared divided by R. <clears throat> but most common form for um, writing down this uh, electric power dissipating on the resistor is I squared times R. What does it mean? means that the most important parameter which defines how much electric energy is delivered to a resistor and dissipated eventually on this resistor S uh, uh, in the form of heat is electric current. So electric current comes here in second power, means it will be the most influential parameter. Means that if we want to design electric circuit in that way, that let's say we deal with some minimum possible resistance, resistance R, and we want to um, transmit through this electric circuit some power, electric power, with minimum losses. Uh, that means that we, first of all, need to reduce electric current, because uh, electric current is in second power. It will have the strongest influence on the amount of um, electric energy which dissipates in form of heat on the resistor. <clears throat> For this purpose, we have Mm, some system of uh, electric power distribution, which is established um, and works worldwide. So imagine that we need to transfer electric energy um, at distances of thousands of kilometers. In that case, we need very, very long wires. And you remember that resistance is equal to rho times L divided by A. So if we want to minimize energy losses, we want to use these wires because they, this energy which dissipates in, in wires is not doing any useful work. It's just, just lost. We kind of warm up atmosphere, which is not our goal. So we want this to happen as uh, like less than, uh, than more. And uh, first of all, we want to use some materials with um, very low specific resistance, um, means something like copper. Um, however, keep in mind that this L lens is huge. It's just thousands of kilometers. So, Resistance will be actually also quite big. So in order to make it small, we need to use some highly conductive materials and um, wires with large cross section. But that's not so easy because you cannot make 10 square meters cross section of a wire. Then such wire will cost per kilometer more than electric power station. And uh, um, that's why you need to find some compromise in order to realize the reasonably uh, 
uh, low resistance of um, these wires. However, there is another parameter which even more influential that is electric current. So how this electric power distribution on long distances work? We have some power generators at electric power stations. Then we have wires going through um, electric generators, which works plus minus about five to 10 kilovolts. Then it goes to a transformator, which increases voltage to 0.5 up to one meha volts. So this is very high voltage uh, systems. Means that we know electric power is defined by current times potential difference. If potential difference is very, if we increase it very much, means we can transmit the same amount of electric power while having much smaller electric current. So that's why when we go to very high voltages in these transmission lines for electric power, uh, we can reduce dramatically electric current. And since electric current comes here in second power, it's influential parameter for amount of heat dissipated on these wires, on this resistor. Um, then we reduce losses dramatically. That's very important. However, we cannot deliver such high voltages into our homes, obviously. And uh, we closer already to consumers, to final consumers. There are transformers which go from these extremely high voltages to lower something 10 kilovolts. Then right next to consumers on our streets, we have additional transformer, which goes from 10 to 230 or 220 volts. In United States and Canada, it's 110 volts. In Europe <clears throat> and uh, most Asia, is uh, 220, 230 volts. So that is delivered to our homes and uh, can be used in um, uh, some electric machines uh, and uh, home supplies. So this is quite a complicated cascade of transformators, uh, which change the uh, voltage of the system. However, taking into account that this distance is very big because we don't have power plants everywhere next to every city, um, it provides a great gain in uh, uh, efficiency because we reduce electrical losses. OK, now. Let us consider uh, and learn a bit more about electric circuits. So the most um, simple electric circuit, which actually provides the fundamentals of their understanding, is the following. So we have connecting wires. We have electric battery with some internal resistance. So batteries are not ideal power sources. They also possess some uh, internal resistance. And uh, obviously, it should be small in order to prevent some excessive heat dissipation inside the battery. However, it's not equal to zero, and that should be taken into account when we deal with electric circuits. So we can uh, put it in some dashed box. 
because it's actually one device. It's electrical battery, but besides this uh, power source, uh, we also have internal resistors. And then we, with wires, we can connect to uh, resistor R. <clears throat> so here we can discuss the potential um, distribution. And uh, that could be shown as following. So let us consider here some potential. And uh, let's consider some points here, A, B, then point C, D, point E, F. So, uh, In this plot, let us show in one line. So they kind of open this electric circuit. So we will have point A, then our electric battery, point B, then we have point C with our electrical internal resistance R, here is point D. Then we will have point E next to the load resistor R. And here is point F. So now let us uh, see how this um, the potential will change. If we consider between points A and B, that's where uh, electric work is done in order to provide energy to electric uh, charges. And that's where potential increases from zero to some electromotive force, which is the uh, potential difference um, uh, between terminals of the battery at zero current. So then there is some electric wire, some connector, and then this internal resistor of electric battery is coming. So here will be some potential drop. To the potential which will be uh, equal to I times R. So there is some electric current I flowing through this. Uh, electric uh, circuit. And then when we come closer to the resistor, this potential will fully drop on the resistor. So it will come back to zero. So if we connect this line, which is drawn here in this plot, um, then potential difference between point F and A will be zero. Then again, between A and B, it goes to epsilon and uh, twice it drops because of voltage drop over um, internal resistor, uh, load resistor uh, R. So um, what we can write here, actually maybe we can define that this difference, so this is, I R, and if we write epsilon minus I times R, 
that will be equal to I times time small r, which is internal resistor. So um, taking this into account, we can write that uh, electromotive force, which is generated by the battery, epsilon, uh, is kind of split in two components. One component is the main voltage drop over the load resistor plus a voltage drop over uh, its internal resistor. So uh, obviously this part, we are trying to make it as small as possible because we want um, all um, um, potential difference between terminals of this battery to be delivered to the uh, terminals of the resistor. However, there is al always some loss on internal resistor. Now, if we want to calculate electric current in such electric circuit, I, it will be equal to total electromotive force, epsilon, divided by total resistance of this circuit. And total resistance of this circuit will be load resistor plus internal resistor. <clears throat> so um, now we can also calculate the uh, electric power, which is um, delivered to both of these resistors, internal and external uh, load resistor. So internal, uh, like total power, which is generated by uh, this battery, like power source, will be epsilon times electric current. So potential difference times electric current. And that, the same manner as uh, potential difference, in the same manner, total electric power will be mm, distributed uh, like divided into components. First one will be the main uh, I square times R uh, load resistor and plus some smaller amount of uh, energy dissipated uh, over internal resistor. So I square times small r. <clears throat> now, there, there is one important question, which is actually, um, let us, like, how, how can we find the load resistance, R, at which the maximum power is delivered to the load resistor? So we have some internal resistance, R small, load resistance, R capital, and we want to know at which conditions, um, at which magnitude of this load resistance, um, we will get the maximum uh, power dissipated on this resistor, electric power dissipated on this resistor. In order to do this, <clears throat> we need to take first derivative of electric power and uh, our set it to zero. So that will give us the way how we determine maximum of some function. So let me probably, uh, before that, let us write that electric power is equal to, um, as we wrote here, uh, Well, that's power dissipated on electric power dissipated on the load resistor will be equal to I square times R. Instead of I square, we can write epsilon divided by R plus small r internal resistance that is square times R. So let us rewrite this equation on new slide and take uh, first derivative uh, dp over dr, uh, capital R, in order to find condition 
uh, at which capital, like magnitude of capital R of load resistor, um, we will get maximum um, electric power dissipation. On it. So P is equal to epsilon divided by R plus small r square times mm, load resistor R. <clears throat> So we take first derivative dp over d capital R equal to <coughs> d over dr. And here we have um, epsilon square r r plus small r square. So let us take the uh, derivative, but maybe before, in order to make it more uh, convenient, uh, we can rearrange it a bit. So it will be d over dr epsilon square well, times r uh, times r plus uh, internal resistance uh, in the power minus two. So now uh, we can take the derivative and we set it to, to zero. So this first derivative should be equal to zero at which value of uh, load resistance it will satisfy this condition equal to zero. So we will get some uh, condition of the maximum power, electric power dissipated. So if we take the uh, derivative, so we, need to consider so it's it's a uh, product of two two functions so we first take uh, derivative of r which is outside this parenthesis so it will be epsilon square times r plus uh, internal resistance in the power minus two and then we need to add uh, epsilon not r and derivative of this parenthesis. So that will be minus two r plus uh, internal resistance in the power of minus three. So this is just rules for uh, taking derivatives of the product of two functions. And uh, Looking at this, uh, what we can do here, let us multiply and divide this first term by R plus uh, internal resistance, capital R plus small r. So in that case, we will get epsilon square times r plus r divided by r plus small r cube. So this term is this term after multiplying and dividing it by r capital R plus small r. Then we can write uh, the second term, which will be actually minus because we have this minus two, it will be minus two epsilon square times R divided by R capital plus R small Q. So denominator is the same. Uh, so we did this multiplication and division by uh, capital R plus small r in order to have the same uh, denominator. So we can write uh, that it's equal to epsilon square times uh, what do we have in the numerator? So we have r plus small r minus 2r. So that means small r minus capital R 
divided by r plus small r q. And that is equal, like should be equal to zero uh, in order to find the value for maximum power, electric power delivered to a load resistor. And uh, this expression will be equal to zero when numerator is equal to zero, since epsilon is not equal to zero because we don't have a dead battery. Let's assume that. So there is only one option for uh, this numerator to be equal to zero when um, load resistor is equal to internal resistor. So we have R equals to internal resistance. So when these two resistors are uh, equal, we get the uh, maximum uh, power delivered from given uh, battery with some electromotive force um, to the load resistor R. Okay, guys, so with this, I believe we will finish our today's discussion. And uh, if you have questions, you're welcome. So, uh, Mas. Yes, yeah, sure. Uh, when we have equal uh, small and uh, large R, we have max power. Uh, maximum power, which can be, be delivered uh, to the uh, load resistor. Oh, okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, we will continue further with uh, also batteries of resistors, uh, how calculate equivalent electric resistance of uh, uh, electrical resistors connected in series or in parallel. And also uh, we will discuss next time uh, some Kirchhoff's rules, which describe how electric current uh, flows uh, in electric circuits. Um, so some, some rules for uh, the uh, distribution of electric uh, current at uh, some connections of some number of wires or also um, how the total voltage drop uh, should be calculated uh, for a closed uh, electric circuit. So those uh, rules are quite important for understanding of uh, DC electric uh, circuits. And uh, uh, that we will discuss uh, during our next uh, lecture on Wednesday. So summarizing our today's meeting, we introduced concept of electrical resistance mentioned that electrical resistance is a function of material properties and uh, also changes uh, with temperature as a linear function. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, uh, discussed uh, the um, amount of electric energy dissipating on uh, load resistor um, based on uh, parameters of electric current. It's either um, electric uh, current magnitude um, or also uh, potential difference and uh, resistance, like magnitude of the resistance of the load resistor, uh, because they kind of related to each other. So we have shown that the most important parameter is electric current because it comes in the second power. And if you want to reduce uh, dissipation of electric energy. You need to uh, reduce electric current, but if there is a requirement to deliver certain amount of electric power, uh, then there is only one option. You increase electric uh, uh, potential difference uh, uh, in order to um, be able to reduce proportionally uh, electric current. In that case, your losses will be smaller. Uh, and also we discussed the um, concept of uh, DC, the direct current electric circuit, 
where we have uh, a battery with some electromotive force, internal resistance of the battery, and external load resistor. Uh, and uh, describe uh, equations which describe, like quantify the electric current uh, magnitude in such electric circuits. Okay, guys, thank you very much for attention. We will continue the discussion of DC uh, circuits uh, next time. Uh, have a good evening and see you next time. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 B